We have many examples in the Old Testament of folks that had servant spirit. There was Abraham and Moses, Joshua and Caleb, Job and Isaiah. We've already talked about James, but in the New Testament there's also Paul and Peter and Jude and John. James calls himself the bondservant of God, and the whole book has this servant nature or perspective from it. You know, as Christians, they say you'll know them by their fruit. And earlier, we read that be doers of the word and not hearers only. Well, we know that we're saved by grace and not by works. But being a servant bears fruit for the unbeliever. And that's important. James 2.26 says, Faith without works is dead. God knows your heart. But in our witness to others, and in our example to others, they need to see that fruit. So it's a new year and everybody has something that they want to do differently this year. I don't like to call them resolutions. Um, maybe it's you want to spend your time more wisely. Maybe it's you'd like to exercise or you'd like to eat better. Or maybe it's saving money. And our desire is there. And then as the year rolls on, we tend to pitter out. That dedication and that drive, it doesn't come easy. Jesus said that he hadn't come to be served, but to serve. And we, as his followers, have been commanded to emulate him by example. But again, developing that servant spirit doesn't come naturally, not to everyone and not to most. The definition of serve is to work for someone like a servant, the steward serves the king, or to be in assistance of or promote something, I'm serving the cause, or to serve to give homage and obedience to, like served God. Most Americans are familiar with the quote, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. President Kennedy, of course, spoke those words as a, his inaugural address, and it was a call to be more and to do more. And he asked the American people to think about the gifts that they had been given and the price that was paid for them. That's something that we Christians could take a look at. What are the gifts that you've been given, and what was the price that was paid to give you these gifts? An attitude or an attribute for growth in our lives is definitely service. To do more, to be more. We're all called to serve God, of course. And as Christians, we're also called to serve the church and our community and the needy. Galatians 5 talks about using our freedom to serve one another. The latter half of James chapter 1 talks about visiting the orphans and serving the widows in their afflictions. The trouble with having a servant's heart is there's so many reasons that we can come up with not to and our negative attitudes. They certainly make it difficult. We always want to focus on ourselves, right? Some reasons that people, Christians, have for not serving, it may be arrogance. You know, if I'm a Christian and I'm at work and folks know who I am, then I'm required um, to temper my words or my actions to continually and continuously show 
my acts of love and service. And that's a sacrifice. There's a reason of ambition. You know, if we go ahead and we do acts of service, is that going to take me away from doing what I want and promoting my own agenda? And I recently saw the movie Left Behind. If you haven't seen the Nicolas Cage version, I suggest that you do. I'm not going to give anything away, really, in case you've seen it. Uh, but I will share a small part that stuck out for me. So it take most of the story, much of the story takes place on a plane. And this is a point in the story that the rapture has already happened. The passengers are kind of frantic and trying to figure things out. And there's a dialogue going on between a man in a business suit who'd been established before that he's a successful businessman and this younger woman. So they're having this conversation about the rapture and she's concerned for her loved ones that are back wherever home is. And he honestly says to her that he was so busy when the rapture happened and there was all this chaos, he realized there was a problem. He was so busy worrying about how this was going to throw off his business plan and his meetings that he had, that he was flying to, that he didn't even think about his loved ones or what their condition was, wherever it was that they called home. His ambition got in the way. There's also a lack of interest, and that's a place where many Christians lay. And it's unfortunate, but it's that place where you're saved, and you know you're saved. You know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you're going to spend eternity in heaven with the Father. And that's kind of where it all stops. Lack of interest. Philippians 2.7, Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Can you think what that must have been like? Our king came down to become flesh, to become a servant for us. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit from Joshua. It's a very uh, familiar portion of scripture. Now therefore fe fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. Choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yes. Joshua, uh, along with Caleb, were two of the scouts that got sent out to go and check out Canaan. Mm -hmm. They were two of twelve, and they were the only two that believed that this was the promised land. So I kind of can envision the reason they had for gratitude, because despite what they saw, they could count it all for joy, and they could be thankful in the promise that was ahead of them. There's many reasons that we get taken away from serving God or our church or our community. And in all fairness, I, actually, I first, I guess I want to balance the message by saying that just because you see a need, it doesn't mean you need to go out and fill every single need for service out there. Um, I actually know someone who did this, and I had a conversation, and she said, um, if, if there was a need, whether it was the nursery or driving the van at church or uh, leading in worship or serving meals to the, to the sick in the community, whatever the need was, I raised my hand and I volunteered. She said, I was exhausted. And she did this for a long period of time. But God gives each one of us gifts and talents. And he gives each one of us um, joy and uh, a sense of what it is that we like to do. So when you're looking for opportunities to serve, look in the areas of things that your giftings are, the things that you're good at. Um, mine would not be to repair someone's computer or to get the audio going. We've learned that repeatedly. <laughs> ah, okay. Where was I? So there are many reasons <coughs> that pull us away. Um, and, and we want to be working within our talents and giftings, but, you know, if I volunteer here, 
that there, there's a show on that night of the week. So if I volunteer and that falls on that night, then I have to give up that show. I just can't do that. Or, you know, that's the, that's the extra day that I like to go and, and, and do yoga or, or play sports or do whatever it is that I'm doing. And those aren't really, um, well, I'll let the Lord speak to you on those items, but our own interests help take us away um, from reasons to serve. And I just keep going back to, you know, he left his home on a throne to get, come down to our earth to serve us. What can't I do? That's right. He gave to himself some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, in Ephesians 4. So that's really important to think about. We have our gifts and our talents to do the work of the ministry, equipping the saints and edifying the body. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And you know, it's good for us to connect with others on different levels in our service. And it's very fun and fulfilling, especially when you're working in your gifts and talents and serving in those capacities. It's also a way to meet people and to network It even forms a positive way of peer pressure. You know, I see so-and-so, and they're always doing this, and I know I've got that same gift. I should be doing this, too. Or if you're the one who's serving, someone's going to look at you, and they're going to say, wow, you know, they've got their busy life, and they're still out doing this, and I can do the same thing. And you're going to be an encouragement to others, and it also, in turn, encourages yourself. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when you think about that and you're getting that little tug on your heart that says, I could do that, I should, that's going on, I could volunteer for that, and something else is saying, yeah, but, you know, whatever, I've got these reasons why I shouldn't. God prepared you in advance to do service. Let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That goes back to the why that we talked about before. And in James 2, paraphrasing, justified by works and not by faith only. Even the demons believe and tremble, but faith without works is dead. Revelation 22.12, this is powerful. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Now, to be clear, we are not saved by works. We're saved by grace. But Revelation 22 tells us that he's going to give us a gift, each one according to his work. Jesus exemplified service in John chapter 13 in the washing of the feet. What an honor it would be if Jesus would look on us as his servants. And he will if we put that into practice. The love for Christ means we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him who loved us and forgave himself for us. Serving produces kindness and love. People are remembered more for their service to humanity than their personal successes. And that's a quote, and unfortunately I can't remember from whom. I want to wrap this up, but gratitude and servanthood, they're interrelated. They're woven together. Our life and our salvation are things to be grateful for. We understand the privilege that we have to serve when we have the gratitude in our heart 
that comes from the real understanding of grace. And that grace was a gift, without which we'd be faced with the eternal separation from God. Serving out of obligation gets the job done, like Fred Flintstone, who loves his mother-in-law. Faking it till you make it. But the greatest example from our Savior, he was a suffering servant. Serving emulates Christ and it encourages others. It relays our heart for Christ, for the unbeliever, and it encourages you. Serving God in the community and reaching out to the needy, it allows us to be and express and grow in gratitude. So together, the gratitude and the servanthood, they're both necessary for us to work on in ourselves to further develop our relationship with Christ and with the body. I know for myself, um, after studying the Word, it was just amazing at how much it resonated in my life and how the light bulb was going off all week of areas that I could and should be more thankful and areas that I could and should serve more. So I'm hoping that in turn it also edifies you all. Thank you.